All right, so I'm going to back up a little bit. I'll start from the beginning, right? But remind me that I was at the point where we walk in the house, okay? All right, so here's my story. My name is Lori Ann Spagna. I told you this. For more than 20 years, I've been working with humans and animals to help us to learn, grow, and evolve out of an old reality that's no longer really functioning and evolve into a new reality that's really functioning. And the way that I started doing what I was doing was through my love for animals and through my sincere desire to be of service to animals on a global scale. That was my mantra. I lived in Manhattan. After college, I worked here in what I call slave labor in corporate America. I was a good slave. I would go to my job every day, and at, by 12 o'clock at night, I'd still be sitting behind a desk crying, saying how much I hated my job. I didn't come here for this. I came here to be of service to animals and make a difference. And that mantra was like every day for, for years. And then what ended up happening in those years that I was doing that, 20 years out of college this went on, I got really, really fat. I was smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. I was drinking eight beers a day. I was, going to, I was spending addictively on a credit card, $150,000 in credit card debt I had. I was going to doctors. What were they doing? Pumping me up with massive doses of cocktails, pharmaceutical drugs. And this was going on for 20 years until eventually my brother died of an accidental drug overdose. And when he died, that was my wake-up call. And I started getting messages from him, you're next. If you don't wake up, you need to start doing what you love, which is to be of service to animals. So I quit my job. My husband divorced me because you're just not allowed to get happy in that, pa <laughs> that paradigm. And I became a dog trainer because I thought that's what I was going to do. I was hired by a gentleman, come on in, who spent 20 years training service dogs for the United States government. And I started working under his tutelage, and I would hear the dogs in my head. Now, I would have thought it was crazy if I hadn't already worked through all the stuff with my brother, my dead brother talking to me. That's how he would come. He would make a joke. He'd say, look, it's your dead brother Jeff. He was a New Yorker. It's your dead brother Jeff. He wasn't dead. He thought it was a joke. He's a very funny guy. So that's how he came through. OK, well, anyway, so I got, you know, I worked through all that. I moved through that, I'm not really crazy. Yeah, I'm crazy, I'm not really crazy. Oh my God, this is real, this is really happening. I can't negate my own experience, right? Because experience is what takes you from believing to knowing, right? I was having these experiences. So I started hearing the dogs in my head and this is what they would say. You don't have to push me, poke me, prod me, force me, tell me what to do, command me, don't do any of that, just listen to me and I will teach you. All the dogs, over and over and over again. Different dogs in different ways. For a year while I was working as a trainer under this guy's tutelage. So I started, I would go through the motions and do what he was telling me, but I would listen to them. And this is it. This is what they'd say over and over again. I'm here. If you want to help us, you need to help the humans. We're here to help the humans. We know our humans' deepest secrets. We know the secrets that the collective of the human race doesn't yet know. And then I would go into the wild and I would talk to animals in the wild too, right? You understand like elephants would say the same thing. They have knowledge. They store up the records. Those big brains, they store up the records of the consciousness of humanity. They know our true history. They store it on purpose so that we can't be lied to or misled so that we can get the truth eventually when we learn to talk to them, to communicate with them. Whales and dolphins keep the records of all the waters, right? So they have this knowing within them. As we learn to connect with them, they share this with us because they have no competition or greed or separation stuff over here in this old reality that we're coming out of. Make sense? Everyone with me? All right, so that's kind of my story, how I started. And from there, I just kept listening to the dogs, listening to other animals, following my love and my joy, and ultimately it led to what I do now, which is way more than just animal communication, telepathy, energy. I have a whole school on that, but I also school of, have a school about ascension, enlightenment, awakening, transformation, because it's really true that when we follow what we love, everything changes. Now, just as a, one last thing is, within two years of quitting my job and following what I loved, within two years, less than two years, $150,000 in debt was gone, gone. I lost 65 pounds of body weight. I quit smoking, have never touched another cigarette again. That was more than 10 years ago. 
I quit alcohol. I almost never drink any alcohol, not because I can't, but just I'm not interested because I have other ways of calming myself, enjoying myself, and relaxing and having fun. Um, yeah, I've not been to a doctor, a medical doctor, in over 10 years, nor has my dog. I've not needed one. So, okay. All right, so let's go back to the story we started, we were talking about before I gave you my whole thing, is that we go into our work world, we pick up all this energy, we're, we're suppressing it and denying it and holding it. We're not even really intuitively in touch with our bodies that much. So we start tensing up, you know, holding it in, locking it into our systems, then our body gets, what do we get? Sick. We get disease, right? But as soon as, we, as soon as we go into our houses, that's the first place we feel comfortable. We drop it all. Now, what happens? Our dog, our cat, our rabbit, our bird in the home with us, and immediately, because they are, animals are the ultimate empaths, they pick it up. They feel it. And because they know that that is the energy in the house that needs to be transmuted, they know intuitively, this is not good energy. This isn't desirable. This feels like stress. This feels like anxiety. This feels... So they take it on by what we call a divine contract, sacred contract. Do you guys know what those are? Sacred contract. I can explain this better if you ask me if you want to know more. They take it on and they do their best to transmute it to provide healing. And if they can't because it doesn't keep coming on, they get sick. And then they mirror that sickness to the human. You understand? They take it on so that the human can see this is the problem you're experiencing. This is how it's showing up in my physical body. And this is what needs to be healed and resolved. Does it make sense? And it's not a guilt thing. It's not anything to make us wrong. It's that that is their sacred contract. That is their divine mission to help us heal and to help us see the mirror reflection of what's going on with us in our reality. Make sense? Anyone have any questions so far? Um, how they contract to die as a result of it? Well, we all make a contract and everything is contracts. There's nothing that's not contracts because we live in a reality that's based on a law of intent, consent, and authority, which is also known as a law of free will. So we have to freely agree to everything we go through here. It's hard to believe that, yeah. but that's really true. Well, let me just finish with her question. And so as we go through this experience, yes, there's a contract. And it, it does include, there, death is a contract. Death is an agreement. This is why you can just let go of your fear of death, because you made a contract a long time ago for when the divine perfect timing is. So yes, that's a contract. That's an agreement. If my pet died um, because of something that they took on what I, um, they were showing me what was. Um, yes. And then you're here by a perfect divine appointment to learn about what that thing was so that you can still finish healing and resolving. And that animal won't move on, not really, until the full contract is completed to help you to heal and resolve whatever that was. Does that make sense? Which is exactly what you're doing here now. Yeah? There's no need to feel guilt or shame. That's not what it's about. It's about understanding our co-creative relationship, that our animals love us so much, and they know how much we love them that we would be willing to heal ourselves for them, even if we won't heal ourselves for ourselves. Make sense? It's, that's the depth of their love, and it's not even martyrdom, because it's not like they're sitting there going, she didn't heal herself for me, or she didn't, you know, it's not like that's not what they're doing. Make sense? Okay, is that helpful? Yeah. Uh, I'm maybe a little confused. Are you saying that our pets are a reflection of our well-being? Yes, that's a great way to put it, and that's absolutely true. Our pets are our yes. Of yes. Oh, wow. I like that the way you said it. Those weren't my words, but it's exactly. Oh. Yeah. So does that mean my my dog had a she passed now for quite some time, but she had a shunt in her liver, or like a like a something that couldn't be operated on. I can't remember what it's called. New York Yorkshire Terrier. Does that mean that I have something wrong with my liver? No. Let's talk about this. This is a good question, Carrie. Okay. So let's let's understand. Everything is energy. Can we all agree to that? Everything, whether it's visible or non-visible, whether it's audible or non-audible, whether we can see it, hear it, feel it, sense it, it exists as energy, whether it's a physical form, right? So, or not, whether it's non-physical. There's non-physical energy. That's how, by the way, that's one of the things I do best. I'm able to work with the non-physical realm, bring it into my consciousness. I call it a download and translate it in a very real way for us to understand it, right? So a lot of what I've learned is I've learned from animals in the afterlife, connecting with animals who have crossed over. 
So if everything is energy, that energy, all energy also vibrates because everything's in movement. That's what Einstein taught us, E equals mc squared. It's just energy in perpetual mo motion, right? So if all energy is movement, that movement creates a vibration or is a vibration. And the speed of that vibration is, anyone know? The frequency, OK? Now, if a vibration is a very high light frequency, in other words, that vibration of the energy is high or light, what might we call that? I'm not losing you. Stay with me. We might call that things like love, joy, happiness, peace, harmony, well-being. When we're aligned with happiness, love, joy, peace, harmony, well-being, prosperity, abundance, which isn't necessarily dollars, it isn't necessarily gold or silver even, but it can be. Okay, when we're aligned with those energies, we feel good, right? We're uplifted. We're healthy. Okay, those are high, light, basically fast-moving frequencies. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, polarity, that's the law of the universe, on the other end of the spectrum, we can have some low, heavy, dense energies, yes? What would those be? Some. Fear, Fear, jealousy, yeah. anger, resentment, greed, manipulation, dominance, control, all those things. Now, what do they do? They move very slow, very, very slow. And they get stuck. And they metastasize. And what do they form? Cancer. Now, the way these frequencies work on the spectrum is that they register at a particular Frequency hurts, right? It's somewhere registered. Now, if we're a body and everything's registering, because we, we're creating those frequencies between our thoughts and our emotions, both conscious and unconscious, both known and unknown, both real and imagined, it's all in there, this lifetime and every other, it's all stored up in this morphogenetic field of who we are that we share with our animals. Okay, so if there's a frequency of something in particular, it's going to register in a particular area of the body. Does that make sense? So we can link very, the, any healer, I'm a healer. We can, we're all healers, by the way. We just have to unlock it within us and awaken it. Any healer can identify, any true healer, where an issue is. If you tell us where an issue is, like for example, what you asked, Carrie, was the liver. We can identify the frequency that resides there. So we know liver processes things like anger, resentment, frequencies in harmony, in harmony with anger and resentment. Anger, resentment, irritation, irritability, frustration, those things get processed by the liver. What, for example, might the heart process? Sadness on the low end, grief. On the high end of the spectrum, love, compassion. Okay, so these energies, now if a person has heart issues, it's going to be linked to some kind of sadness, trap sadness, or inability to express love, blocks, right? Now if the animal is picking up everything in the human's environment, you can see how the animal is going to feel and sense that, and yes, take on the energy and mirror it back. So if there's something going on in the liver that couldn't be operated on, isn't that a blessing? Because basically it was just energetic that you can transmute. You understand this is why cancer can be cured through forgiveness. Because cancer is anger and resentment. Where it shows up in the body? Where it shows up in the body? Cancer of the brain, angry, resentful thoughts. Cancer in the throat, angry, resentful words, trapped. Cancer in the heart, I don't know, if, here, the chest area. Angry, resentful love, anger about love, resentment about love. I can go on. You understand every illness in the body. Um, anger and resentment about being a man or re regarding the female energy, the women. Or the, could, be, could be the mother, but that usually would show up more over here, breast related. Does this make sense? So our animals, they pick that up. They feel it in our, their environment. They reflect it at us. We can learn from our animals about our own health and our well-being. And as we learn that, we can process through our own energy in a healthy way so that we don't have to get sick. We don't have to take that on. And neither do they. It's a gift. Illness, disease, is not disease. There's nothing wrong. There's the universe and all the divine intelligence and all the sacred contracts showing us, oh, this is what I just need to address. 
And that's why forgiveness cures cancer, because uh, in this example. Because forgiveness is I'm releasing all that anger. I forgive. It's the ultimate healer. Forgiveness is the ultimate healer. If you're, is there anyone on the panel with me today? No? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah? OK, because that came up today. All right. Questions? I want to talk about telepathy. But any questions? Can't, everyone with me? Yes. Yeah? Is this helpful to you guys? Yes. OK, good. So let's talk about telepathy. So telepathy between two animals is brain-to-brain -brain information, right? I can think a thought, and you can pick up on it. And it can be between a human and an animal, animal and an animal, or human and a human. Still telepathy, brain-to-brain -brain information. Where, how does telepathy get communicated? How do people and animals engage in, in this telepathy? Does anyone know? What's that? Well, OK, that's empathic. So I'm going to come to that. You're not wrong about that. But OK, of course you don't know, because that's what you hear. That's, a, that's good. If you all had the answers, you wouldn't need me here right now. So the way that happens is through a brainwave frequency, which is another frequency. It's a frequency of information, which we would call a theta brainwave. It's a brainwave frequency. We all have access to it. It's just that humans walking around planet Earth are not trained. In fact, it's actually been removed from our school systems to learn how to access any brainwave other than a beta brainwave. The only ba brainwave you access in the school system, for example, where we learn, is a beta, which is active and alert, the left brain logical brain. Remember how we talked about the left brain? So that's been actually trained out of us. It's being trained out of us. Even when they took scissors out of the school systems that you could only use your, your, your right-handed scissors, right-handed desks in the school system, that's so that you're only using the left brain, because the left brain is the beta brain wave, associated with the beta brain wave. It trains you out of using any other brain wave. Is this making sense? Yeah. Yes. OK, now, we all use a delta brain wave. When do we do that? When do we, when do we use that? Sleeping. Sleep time. Yeah, that's when you're dreaming and different different ranges of hertz. OK, so you have to actually learn how to use a theta brainwave. By the way, what is basic meditation? What's that? Listening. OK, well, basic, basic meditation is an alpha brainwave. OK, so people are learning that. And we can get into a nice meditative state. We can connect with fairies and angels and benevolence, and they're real. And we can connect with entities and demonics if we want to do that too. And that is a brainwave state, we, partly a brainwave state. It's also energetic vibration, right? But in order to have telepathy, you have to access true telepathy, a theta brainwave. That's where that happens. Now, there's other forms of telepathy that are higher that would happen on a game, gamma brainwave, where you can have many conversations at once. Many times when I'm connecting and doing healing sessions and group healing and teaching. There's so many beings from so many dimensions I'm interacting with. And I know I'm in a gamma state because I can speak, I can talk, I can communicate, and it's all coming in. But for just brain-to-brain -brain telepathy, theta brainwave, very easy to learn, actually. But you need to, you need to be taught it because we're not being taught it. OK. But everybody can do it. Now. What you had brought up, and I'm sorry, I don't know your name or remember your name. I apologize. But you brought up through the skin, right? Did you say that? Or you said through feeling. OK, so feeling happens in two ways. Number one, through the heart center. Now we're not talking about a brain. We're not talking specifically about telepathy. But we are talking about exchanging information. And we know from the Institute of Heart Math that we have brain matter in our hearts. Do we, can we agree on that? Yeah. I mean, you might not know that, but that is scientifically validated that we have brain matter in our hearts. We also have brain matter in our gut, in our digestive system. So when we start to develop these centers, the brain matter, brain elasticity, have you heard that word? Brain elasticity. You build your brain up. It's a different kind of brain, but it's still brain matter. So it's not an analytical brain, but it is an intelligence. So we can communicate from heart to heart. It's not the same thing as telepathy, but it's still communication. And it's beyond the five senses, right? So animals already have that developed. They've already developed it, more than we have. But that's another way. So when we start learning how to use the intelligence of our heart, and we can sync up with other beings, including one another, through that heart center, we can have a two-way dialogue in that way. Make sense? Now this is part of being empathic, because you can walk into a room where people were just screaming or fighting. They, the screaming and fighting might, not be, might be over. 
might not still be going on, but you could walk in that room and you could feel it. You're like, well, it feels tense in here. Am I right? And you can walk into one of these rooms where someone was just meditating or doing energy healing and you can sit down and be like, oh, wow, it feels good in here, right? That's empathic. That's sensitive. You're using a sensitivity. You're using a higher level of intelligence, but you're not analyzing it. You just know it. Makes sense? So we all have it. It's a matter of developing it. And once we start seeing how much it can serve us, can serve our health, our well-being, it can help us because once you start feeling those higher, lighter frequencies of love and happiness and peace and joy and abundance and prosperity, not only do you not get sick, but you start, let's just talk briefly about the laws of the universe. You start attracting more of that to you. You start having more experiences that are in vibrational harmony with those kinds of experiences. Make sense? Because up here, when you're in this higher, lighter range of peace, happiness, joy, love, you're radiating that out. That's, you're a creator being radiating that out from you. It's circulating around. You guys have heard some of my people, I've heard this like 50 million times now. Circulating around your field, law of circulation, that is a universal law, which means it cannot be broken. Whether we know it or not, it's working, it's happening. So we're creating through our thoughts and our emotions, we're feeling, we're sensing. It's radiating out from us emanating out from us, circulating through the field around us and attracting like, equal, or greater back to us. That's the law as well. Physics validates it, right? Law of attraction. Okay, so all of this stuff, when we start doing this and working with this kind of vibration and energy, it starts transforming our entire reality to the point that we're no longer in vibrational harmony with any of these denser, heavier experiences. Does this make sense? So this way, our animals are actually showing us, if you get in vibrational harmony with the things that feel good and right and happy and abundant and lovely and joyful, if you get in vibrational harmony with that, not only do you not have to get sick, you will start to know you will never be sick again. Not only do you know, start to know, oh, I can live abundantly and prosperously, you will also start to know you will never be poor again. Not only will you start to do work that you love and enjoy that gives you excitement and pleasure, you will never ever think again that you're going to need to find another slave labor job. Make sense? Yes. So this is why it is so important for us to understand vibration because our old reality that we've been living in is based in the vibration of fear. I mean, one thing I know ever since 9-11, New Yorkers, and I mean, I'm a New Yorker. I grew up in, I was born in the Bronx. New Yorkers have been controlled by fear, like worse than almost any other place on the planet that I'm aware of. We've been controlled by fear through that 9-11. And I mean, it's, it's linked to our ancestry because, you know, the people who came into Ellis Island brought that over from our ancestry. And it's, it's stored up in the DNA, which we're not here for that today, but... You guys hopefully have heard my thing on the DNA. Anyway, so, okay, so our animals are here by divine appointment, divine contract to help us learn this. Because why? Because that's where we let our walls down. And that's one of the ways that we're actually open to receive, right? But the point that I was making with the vibration is, you know how everybody on TV and everyone's always like, you need protection, you need protection. Even in these rooms, I, I almost cringe when I hear people say, protect yourself. Or how do I protect myself? Fear it's fear-based. It's coming from a fear-based perspective. What protects you? OK, I go even further. High vibration. Hi, your vibration. Your vibration is your protection. There is no need. In fact, there's no need for protection here. There really isn't. It doesn't mean you're not going to run into corners and stuff, but you're going to see. It doesn't mean you're not going to sometimes run into something that really throws you off. But that is something that's somehow stored up in your unconscious that you need to heal and resolve. So I'm going to give you an example of this, OK? I think this is a good example. Not directly our animals, but it is at the same time. Oh, and I was going to go to the skin on the empathic, OK? So just recently, I did a, actually, it wasn't just recently, but I've been working on for a little while healing and resolving the imbalances in hormones in my own body. Sexual hormones. Sexual hormones are linked to gender-related factors. Menopause is linked to that as well. All kinds of stuff that goes on here is 
in part, gender-related issues in our thoughts and emotions. So I did this meditation. I asked for a download. I do a healing on myself. No one else is around. I want to heal and resolve the imbalances in the hormonal system. Within a week, less than a week, actually, <laughs> it was like three days, I found myself sitting in the car with a male, arrogant, white supremacist, 34-year-old kid, oh my God. cursing me out in the car. And I, from the moment he got in the car, I don't know why my radar didn't say, pull over, drop him off. Was, he actually needed something from me, so I was trying to be of service. I was trying to help him. And I think that's what overrode the pull over, drop him off. But anyway, I sat in the car with him, and I witnessed this male, arrogant, white supremacist, and I realized, oh, that was the healing. Because I, it took me a couple days I was processing. It was very painful. This is not, this, this is not that far long ago. It was very painful to process that, but I realized it was a result of healing the imbalance in the hormones. Because women for lifetimes have been storing up, and this is in the DNA, this is in the bloodlines. You understand? It's linked to our lineage. Women are healing our grief from lifetimes of being suppressed, denied, and repressed. And we see it in our world stage right now. It's everywhere. You guys seeing? raped, sexually abused, and I'm not making this about male, female, I'm just using an example. We're all here to heal this because every man has a feminine energy, every woman has a feminine energy, every male has a masculine energy, and every, we both have both. I don't know what I said there, I lost one. And same for our animals too, right? They have feminine energy and masculine energy. I'm gonna give you guys an answer that no, I think nobody knows. I am amazed nobody, even in the spiritual community does not know this. What is masculine energy? Now, now everybody got tripped up. You know this. Creativity. Creativity. Yes. Force. Make it happen. You know when you're using your masculine energy because it's like this kind of energy, right? I'm up in front of the audience. I'm calling on masculine energy right now. Creation. Make it happen. There's some kind of activity. There's some kind of push, right? You know when you're walking through the expo and someone's like pulling you in, pushing you in, buy this, sell this. Here's my... That's masculine energy. Yes? Okay, now here's the part nobody knows. What is feminine energy? Receptive. Yes, that's what everybody believes, receptive. Healing, allowing, Healing, allowing. all those are true. No, here's, no, but those are aspects of feminine energy, but they're still doing. Do you understand they're still doing? They're not as extreme polarized, so they're within the range, moving closer to feminine energy. I get it, nobody knows this. <laughs> Here's what I like you guessing. Here's what feminine e energy is. Ready? All that is. Being. Being. So when you're in the silence of just being, that's feminine energy. It's just being. And there's, I mean, to me, New York is the city of penises. <laughs> Do you look? At all the buildings, they're all penis shaped. Yeah. So this is like, it's a storehouse of masculine energy in this city. And I love New York, I really do. But what I'm saying is, is in order for us to be balanced, we need, we need to have both. We need to reclaim that within ourselves. Anyway, this is the example. What I was saying was, if everything is about being in vibrational harmony here, I consider myself to be a very heart-centered person. I extend love in silently in my mind, even when I meet people. I'm usually thinking, namaste, I love you, I bless you, the soul in me honors the soul in you. I move through my life like that. I interact with people and I'm sending love in my mind, even if I'm not, I mean, I, even before I knew you, I was sending, Carrie's in one of my classes called Exiting the Matrix. So, it's not even just a mind thing, it's just the way we move through life, right? It doesn't mean I haven't had this challenge with this guy who ended up in my car being a male, arrogant, white supremacist. I was looking for a healing. The universe magnified what needed to be healed in a very big way so that I would understand, you want to heal this? You're going to have to forgive these male, arrogant, white supremacists that you're pissed off at from other lifetimes because I totally got it. I knew this guy when I was, this is one of my few claim to fame's parallel lifetime is like, either Norma Ray or someone similar. Like I get it, I don't know exactly when she crossed over, but you know, standing on the top, fighting for the freedom workers, you know, with the men, and I, that I was a union worker who spoke up to male, arrogant, white supremacists. And somehow in my lineage, in my bloodline, I took that on. 
as a way to be repressed, to repress me, to suppress me. I repress and suppress myself. And this is part of the imbalance there, right? OK, so anyway, I'm just giving you the example as vibrational energy to understand this is how it shows up. Because we get sidetracked. We think, oh, I'm going along being love and light. And how did that happen? Like, why is my family still driving me crazy? Or how can my dog get that thing? Because I'm being love and light. Well, it's just showing you those areas where you're not yet fully anchored, fully aligned. Because that's what we're doing. We're going through this process. And our animals are helping us along. Make sense? It wasn't the moment of healing. It was the moment of escalation that forced me, because I'm not a person who lives in denial. I would never pretend that didn't happen. I would be like, what the hell just happened? Like, how did that show up in my reality? How did I create that? What? <laughs> yeah, because as I explored it and dove into it, and ex you know, I, the answers were revealed, yeah? OK. All right, any other questions, questions, comments? Yeah. Yes. 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 As we heal and resolve our fear. Look, here's what's happening. This is a little off topic, but it's so everything's connected. As we heal and resolve our fear, this old paradigm is collapsing. It's not working. We see it not working. And the same thing is true that it is just like that experience with the kid in my car was amplified in such a way that I could not miss it so that I could heal this. That was a gift to me, so I could heal this imbalance in the hormones for myself. Because I, OK, that's another story. So souls, too, is our world situation really magnified. Not so we can hate Donald Trump. Do you want to know what Donald Trump is? He is holding the space for us to heal the wounded feminine and the wounded masculine. It's a major issue. He is doing a fabulous job from a sp spiritual perspective of saying, Look at all this dictatorship. Look at all the tyranny. Look at all the male supremacy. Look at all the arrogance. This is not about politics. This is about a spiritual evolution. So, and I mean, they're all doing that. Everyone on the world stage is holding the space for us to heal and resolve. Any, any conspiracy buffs in here? No? OK. So what is conspiracy? It's everywhere we wanted to stay in our own trapped little world of denial and everywhere we gave our power away and didn't want to admit it. And when we heal and resolve that, conspiracy is, and it is being exposed, and it's in a big way. The next year, just wait, it's all coming out. Pluto just, I mean, uh, Jupiter just moved into Scorpio. <laughs> Forget it. In the next year, your, your socks are going to be rocked. Okay, so. So this is what's going on, right? So does that answer that question? All right, let's talk about animals in the afterlife. Can we do that? Yeah. I know some people are here for that, too. Yeah. So all right, animals, when they cross over, the first thing we, we have to realize, and this is true about us, too. I'm just going to reinforce that what I'm saying here is also true about us. And of course, it's always up for your discernment. I'm just offering a point of view of what I've received through communication with animals who have crossed over and through communication, oh my god, 10 minutes only, with the higher realms, I can communicate at least to 12 dimensions of consciousness, right? Those dimensions are available to us to communicate with them as we open up our channel for communication, as we clear, heal, and resolve the things that keep us trapped in just, I'm only a mere human, you know, sick and diseased, and have to give all my power to my doctor, my lawyer, my teacher, et cetera. Right? So that's what, why I can communicate with these other realms. So what I'm offering here is a vibration or a range of vibrational information for you to perceive and discern. So animals who have crossed over, including humans, what we do is we make sacred contracts, sacred agreements, before we ever incarnate into the physical body. And we make those contracts, I'm going to go through this, I'm going to help this, I'm going to serve here, I'm going to learn this, I'm going to play with this. Learning isn't really the right word, but I'm going to evolve, I'm going to resolve this, I'm going to, all these things, right? I'm going to work with my human. And then there comes a point where the bulk of the contract is complete. And then usually what you have is two or three exit windows. Someone will get sick, but they'll be healed. It's an exit window. They have an opportunity to leave. But if the two say, hey, we want to stay longer, oh, I got some of the lesson, I'll do some forgiveness, or I'll process through this, 
they can stay longer. It's an opportunity for more healing. So you have a few exit windows, and then the animal crosses over. Sometimes you'll see that because they get sick beforehand, right? Once they cross over, most cases, the contract's not completed. That means they stay around you as an animal guide. And they are helping you to work through whatever the major issues were, even after the times they've, that they've crossed. And you can call on them. Because we know this consciousness never dies. What, if you even apply E equals MC squared, basic Einstein science, Einstein was like, this is everything. E equals MC squared applies to everything. That means us. That means our consciousness. So even when animals cross over, their consciousness lives on in perpetual motion. Humans as well. And that consciousness exists in the field. So even if you decide to bring your consciousness down into another lifetime, like an animal reincarnates just like we do, if you decide to reincarnate and have a new experience because your contracts with the old life are done, you can do that. But some part of your higher consciousness, we call it a higher consciousness, a more lighter consciousness, still is always there and has complete access to this lifetime. So when we're talking to an animal who's crossed over, we're accessing that part. It doesn't matter when they crossed over. We can access that consciousness. It exists in the field of unity of all that is. It also exists within the Akashic Records. Does anyone know what the Akashic Records are? Yeah, I'm, Akashic, I'm an Akashic Records teacher. So in any case, we can access and we can communicate. We can extract and explore and continue to learn and grow and evolve together and heal. And it's important to do this, too, because a lot of times what happens is if we cross over in some kind of trauma or drama or unresolved stuff, we store it up. Where do we store it? In the DNA. We store it up in the unconscious mind. Cellular memory of the body holds the memory of it, and we have to resolve it in another lifetime. Not always that way, but sometimes. So it's good even if we're working with an animal who's crossed over, as long as we're working with consent, permission, conscious con permission in a way where we know how to do that, we know how to directly get agreement, we can heal and resolve a lot of those issues, even though the animal or the human has crossed over. Make sense? Yes. OK. Questions? I, I'm like almost at the end of my time. I get about seven minutes here. So. You said the other day on the panel about how to ascend from the third dimension to the field. Yes. You can really get this. OK, so when, what you're asking is, this is from what I was talking about on the panel, we've been living all of our reality is based in this, what we call this third dimensional reality, which is based on space, in a sense. There's a space between you and I, and there's a distance. People don't even understand all the healing, all the communication I do, it's by phone. My sessions, my private sessions, are typically by phone or Skype. Why? Because there's no space when I'm accessing higher consciousness. But in third dimensional reality, we exist in space, right? We think we're a localized being. We're only this physical form, and nothing else is real between us except some other physical body. There's this space between us is nothing. But in fifth dimensional frequency, we start existing from a place of unity consciousness. And we vibrate in harmony with these higher, lighter frequencies of love and peace, et cetera. Unity consciousness and alignment with the divine source. All is healthy. All is well. Our original divine blueprint, which is within us, right? We can activate and awaken that. OK, I got five minutes. So. In order to exit from this reality, these are the, this is the, like, the basic linear steps. And I'm, I'm not a linear person anymore, but I'll give you the linear steps because we like that. Number one, you have to start to recognize yourself as totally, completely, and wholly lovable and acceptable. That everything about you is lovable and acceptable. And you are wholly, completely loved and accepted. You have to really fully learn how to love yourself. Not that you have to learn it, but you do. Right? We all do. Then we have to do the same for everyone else. Everyone else is worthy and deserving of love, acceptance, peace, forgiveness, happiness, and joy, just like you are. No matter what quote unquote wrongness we think they've done, because that's the judgment that only exists here. We have to drop our judgments, right? So that's the second thing. The third thing is you have to start to recognize you're an aspect of the divine source, the creator of all that is, all that ever was, and all that ever will be. And that's according to the law of one, which is the law of love. All there is is one divine source that vibrates in harmony with love and peace. It's conscious of itself. It's conscious. So you have to recognize yourself as an aspect of that. Then you also have to recognize that every other being, including the chair, the table, the building, the space in between is an aspect of that. In fact, that there's nowhere that it's not. Make sense? You with me? So once you start to recognize that, 
then you start saying, okay, if that's the case, I have to start actively identifying every thought, every belief, every idea, every obstacle, every challenge, every energy, every frequency that keeps me stuck in this old third dimensional paradigm. One by one, I'm going to identify them and I'm going to clear them away. I'm going to heal them. I'm going to resolve them. I'm going to get the gifts that I'm meant to receive from having those experiences, higher consciousness, and I'm going to evolve that. So that's a process. That's called an ascension process. It's part of the process. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a big thing. It's not a pill. There's no pill that will cure us. So we process through that. That's where the work of healers, intuitives really helps. A really good gifted healer who can already hold the space of divine neutrality, who understands you're a divine being and is just helping you clear your blocks. They're not going to sit there and judge you and make you think you're less than just because you're struggling. All right, so that's part of the process. And then as you identify that and clear that out, you simultaneously or in collaboration with that are downloading and instilling more of the light within you. Light body activations, activating the codes in your own dormant DNA, which is a huge part of what I do, awakening the sacred codes that really help us to know ourselves as creator beings embodied, divine source aspects of this source. Make sense? You guys with me? Yeah. So that's a process. That's the process we go through with ascension. We're doing it now. And then as you continue to do that, it becomes just about how do you be of service. And understand the service thing is very important to get because our animals already do this. They're already doing it so perfectly. It's service not only to others, it's service to yourself too. Because you, it's that concept, you know, the airplane thing. You have to serve yourself and take care of your basic core needs and core values. You can't really be of service. I mean, I find it amazing. And even in the spiritual communities here, we come here and you have people who come here and they're broke or they're sick and they're teaching how to love one another, but they haven't loved themselves yet. Or they're teaching healing, but they're sick, or they're teaching money and they're broke. You understand? We have to heal and resolve our own issues. So the service that we do has to be for ourselves. Then as we shift from serving ourselves, not from this place, because self-service here is greed, dominance, service over another, service to yourself, self-serving. This is an entirely different kind of service in 5D. The service is, I love myself so much, I know I can be a beacon of light. I know I can heal and resolve all my wounds, and in so doing, I'm actually helping the collective. I'm having an influence, and now I'm really being of service to the divine source of infinite consciousness, and now I can serve the greater good of all. That's the process. Does that make sense? The linear process. Yeah. Uh, I lost quite a few pets over the years, mostly dogs. Are you saying that I'm, I'm able, I would be able to communicate with all of them? Or what? I mean, or if you learn how, absolutely. You can communicate with them. What? Yes. I know that some animal that communicators... Some animal communicators say that if they've died a long time ago, they won't. But that's because they're functioning from linear mind. You understand? There's no linearity. If you go into the highest consciousness of the, the, the soul of that animal, you can connect with them at any time. It doesn't matter when. But it is a practice. You do have to learn. Yeah. Okay, well, that is what I teach. This is a 50-minute presentation. So I try to do my best, but I mean, one of them is I teach. Okay, I get it. My time's up. I have like two minutes now to wrap or something. One of the things I teach is the theta technique. That's specifically my technique. It's so fast and so easy. You learn how to access the theta brainwave. You learn telepathy. We develop and strengthen the abilities that we have, the heart center, the gut, to follow that intuitive, because our animals have gut brain too. Right. We have that, all of that. We l use our skin, which in the earliest stages, goose pimples, goose bumps, you know. But we learn to strengthen and develop all of that. We learn how to scan bodies. We learn how to heal and resolve and identify what's going on energetically within the body. It's all part of it. So, all right, I want to say a couple things because I know I need to wrap. I have like two or three minutes. First. If you haven't already, please make sure you give Michelle your email address. We will send you some really wonderful, really content-rich gifts for free. One of which will be three simple steps to effective energy healing and seeing and experiencing fast and effective work results when working with animals and humans. Energy healing, tools every energy healer needs to know. One of them will be seven surefire steps to making a heart-centered connection with your animal companions. It's free classes. There are more of this, even better. Just as much, even more, even greater. And 11 ways to have a more magnificent relationship with your animal companions. This is stuff that's not in 3D, right? Outside of 3D. Plus lots of other great gifts. 
um, the science of being psychic, learning about your dormant DNA and how to unlock it, learning if you're a light worker or a star seed, developing your intuition, all these free gifts, as long as you give Michelle your email address, make sure we can read it clearly. You can also get it yourself if you go to lorispagna.com forward slash free gifts. lorispagna.com forward slash free gifts. If you would like to learn more about participating with me in classes and workshops, there's sort of two different kinds of things I do. Number one, I do monthly circles where we come together, we do energy healing, sacred energy healing for people and animals it's by teleseminar. You call in, the energy is just as effective no matter where you are in the world because we're working with divine source. It's source who does the healing. I'm a facilitator and a translator. So you can participate in those. I also do bi-monthly ascension, manifestation, and healing circles. We do DNA activations. We do energy healing. We get coaching, support. Those are live events that happen once a month. Every other month we change. I do speed activations to awaken our dormant codes. It's all through the newsletter. That's how you find out about it, so you need to be in my community. The other thing that I do is I have two schools, which you can learn on your, with, you, with me and on your own. One is the School of Animal Communication, Telepathy, and Energy Healing. The other is the School of Ascension, Enlightenment, and Transformation. Yeah? This flyer, if you want to grab one, is up here. I apologize I'm on the last few of them, but you can find it all out at my website, but you can grab that flyer. The free gifts, if you want to remember the free gifts, is here. And then one other thing, I have a sacred membership. This is a year-long membership. You can participate on your own whenever you want. You log in. It's got DNA activations. It's got classes on animal communication and telepathy. It's got classes on the Akashic Records. It's got classes on Ascension. It's got classes on extraterrestrials. It's got classes on self-love. It's got meditations galore, healing energy, live, powerful, sacred energy healing. It's a full year. It's on my website. And it's $100 off if you joined here, if you take this flyer, Sacred 7. Sacred 7. Other than that, these are the two seed last four CDs I have left. Learn animal communications, the basic steps, and animals in the afterlife. They're double CDs. The regular price is 40. I'll do a show special, 30. Save 10 bucks. And that is my presentation, you guys. Thank you so, so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed it.